This is IKSC International Kangaroo Science Contest and I am going to solve question number 21 to 30 of the past paper 2022 for class 7, 8 which is also known as carry level. Well every question worth 4 points. Question number 21 which of the following is not a fundamental unit of measurement S dot I dot that is also called international units of system. Options are A, second B, volt, C, ampere, D, meter, and E, Kelvin. Moving for some explanations, there are seven base or fundamental units which are as follows meter m for length kilogram kg for weight second s for time kelvin k for temperature ampere a for electric current candela cd for luminous intensity mol mol for amount of substance however volt is a derived unit not a fundamental unit the volt is a derived unit for measuring potential differences or the energy per unit charge one joule of energy per coulomb of charge equals one volt Volt is essentially defined as 1 volts equals 2 kg meter square uh, seconds per raised to power minus 3 ampere raised to power minus 1 in the SI system. The fundamental units kg meter second and amperes are used to derive a volt. So the answer for this question is option number B volt. Moving on question number 22. In order to separate a mixture of water powder, sugar and oil we will produce with the following operations in order. Options are given below. A. Crystallization separation with a separation funnel. B. Filtration crystallization. C. Distillation crystallization. D. Separation with a separation funnel crystallization. E. Separation with the separation funnel distillation. The next slide will give you some interpretations. Separating funnel is used to separate the mixture of two immiscible liquids oil and water do not mix with each other and form two separate layers These are called immiscible liquids. The mixture separates into two layers according to their densities The heavier liquid water forms the lower layer whereas the lighter liquid forms the upper layer oil thus the water is first collected in the beaker and the oil is collected in another beaker then use evaporation process to separate sugar from water. Sugar at the end forms crystals so the process is called crystallization. According to this explanation, the answer is option number D. Separation with the separation funnel and then crystallization. Next question number 23. Which of the following statements about the spinal cord is false? Options are at the bottom of the slide. A. It sends information to receivers. B. It contains gray matter inside. C. It is a part of the central nervous system. D. It contains some centers of involuntary reflexes. E. It is connected to the periphery by the spinal nerves. For the answer of this question, we are going to interpret every uh, option one by one. Option number A, it sends information to receivers. The nervous system use, uses tiny cells called neurons, neurons to send messages back and forth from the brain through the spinal cord to the nerves throughout the body. Billion of neutrons, neurons work together to create a communication work. This is false. Option number B, it contains gray matter inside. The gray matter also extends from the brain into the spinal cord. The gray matter creates a horn-like structure throughout the inside of the spinal cord. So this is correct. Option number C it is a part of the central nervous system. The spinal cord is an extension of the central nervous system which consists of the brain and spinal cord. That is also correct. Option number D it contains some centers of involuntary reflexes. Reflexes are involuntary, consistent, consistent reactions to specific stimuli. The reflex arc of spinal reflexes does not involve the brain or brain stem. This is also correct. Option number E. It is connected to the periphery by the spinal nerve. 
each spinal nerve is connected to the spinal cord by a dorsal root and a ventral root so this is also correct so this false statement is only option number a and that one is our correct option next is question number 24 and you can actually see the picture of this question where there is a bulb battery emitter and voltmeter is connected in parallel to the bulb so which of the following shows the schematic diagram for the electrical circuit from figure one this is a diagram and then we have there are schematic diagrams in every option and which one is the correct one we need to choose the right answer but for that we are going to check that what these uh, symbols look like in schematic diagrams bulb symbol is like this is a cross battery symbol is this voltmeter and emitter symbols are available now and you can actually check now if we look at the diagram battery emitter and bulb are connected in series however voltmeter is always connected in parallel and that is parallel with what bulb bulb is in parallel with battery and voltmeter emitter is in series with battery the same explanation which i have given to you so the correct option for this is option number c because bulb voltmeter is in parallel with uh, with the bulb and emitter is always in the series and c is our correct option question number 25 which of the following are sources of renewable energy option number a natural gas b petroleum c graphite d coal e tides well all of the following are non-renewable energy because with the passage of time they are going to become destroyed or ended naturally however option number e tides are not ending so option number e is our correct option because all option except e tides are ending because of extra consumption moving on question number 26 choose the correct pathway of the urine in her body from the place of formation to the place of elimination the orders the different kind of orders are given in options below option number a kidneys urethra bladder ureters b kidneys ureters urethra bladder c urethra ureters kidneys bladder d bladder kidneys urethra ureters e kidneys ureters bladder urethra for this what is the order we are going through the urinary system diagram so this is a urinary track the first is the kidneys then ureters then the third one bladder and the last one is urethra both in the male and female same system available so according to that option number e kidney ureters bladder and urethra is the right option well question number 27 is when a wave travels through a medium options are a the energy is transferred from one place to other b the speed of wave is the same in different medium c the particles of medium are transferred from one place to the other d the amplitude is the same in different mediums e the wavelength does not depend on the medium through which it passes for this question first of all we should know what is actually a wave when a wave travels in a medium then there is a vibration in the medium particle the medium particles vibrate on their position only there is no displacement of the medium particles only the energy transfer occurs from one medium particle to another medium particle in terms of their vibration regarding this explanation the correct option is option number a the energy is transferred from one place to the other 
क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी एट अ टू पॉइंट फोर ग्राम्स मैग्नीशियम सैम्पल इज बर्न इन ऑक्सीजन रिजल्टिंग फोर ग्राम्स ऑफ मैग्नीशियम ऑक्साइड द अमाउंट ऑफ कंज्यूम ऑक्सीजन इज ऑप्शन आर इक्वल टू द अमाउंट ऑफ मैग्नीशियम डेट पर इंट्रोड्यूस बी फोर ग्राम सी वन पॉइंट सिक्स ग्राम डी टू ग्राम्स ई टू पॉइंट सिक्स ग्राम अकॉर्डिंग टू दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डू सम एक्सप्लेनेशंस और कैलकुलेशंस सो दिस इज द रिएक्शन डेट मैग्नीशियम इज रिएक्टिंग विद ऑक्सीजन एंड देर आर टू मोल्स ऑफ मैग्नीशियम विच इज रिएक्टिंग विद ऑक्सीजन गैस विल गिव यू टू मोल्स ऑफ मैग्नीशियम ऑक्साइड दिस इज द बैलेंसड इक्वेशन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी आर गोइंग टू फाइंड मोल्स ऑफ मैग्नीशियम एंड द फॉर्मूला इज मैस ऑफ मैग्नीशियम डिवाइड बाई एटोमिक मैस ऑफ मैग्नीशियम मैस ऑफ मैग्नीशियम इज ऑलरेडी गिवन डेट इज टू पॉइंट फोर डिवाइड बाई ट्वेंटी फोर द आंसर वी गेट इज पॉइंट वन मोल एंड इफ वी टॉक अबाउट द मोल्स ऑफ मैग्नीशियम ऑक्साइड एंड डेट इज फोर ग्राम्स इज गिवन एंड फोर्टी इज एक्चुअली द मैस ऑफ मैग्नीशियम एंड ऑक्साइड सो मोल्स ऑफ मैग्नीशियम ऑक्साइड इज पॉइंट वन मोल now both the moles are similar and we can relate it with the oxygen gas two moles of magnesium oxide equals to one mole of oxygen so one mole of magnesium oxide will give you half mole of oxygen this is the unitary method where two moles multiplying on the left side and on the right side when it goes it is dividing half the answer uh, the next step is 0.1 mole of magnesium oxide will give you half multiplied by 0.1 mole of oxygen gas the answer we get is 0.05 moles of oxygen mass of oxygen consumed from the moles we can get the mass through the formula mass of oxygen consumed equals to moles multiplied by atomic mass of oxygen gas so the answer is 0.05 multiplied by 32 answer is 1.6 grams through these calculations the answer we get is option number c 1.6 grams question number 29 choose the correct statement about heredity options are at the bottom of the slide it represents the characteristic of individuals to differ from each other it is provided by mutation in the genetic material c it represents the transmission of characteristics from parents to descendants t all human characters are heredity e it represents the transmission of characters from parents to grandparents which option number e is wrong it is not it is not the reverse process from parents to grandparents however moving to the next slide for the definition of heredity heredity is the passing on of physical or mental characteristics genetically from one generation to the another another like from the bigger generation to the smaller one so for this option number c is correct it represents the transmission of characteristics from parents to descendants descendants are the lower ones moving on to the last question of this video question number 30 the experiment shown in the image below highlights the phenomena of option number a refraction b reflection c dispersion d diffusion e convection the next slides will give you uh, different kinds of phenomena and we can easily guess what will be the answer so refraction is actually what passing of light from one material to the uh, another material and it actually bended like you can actually check the pencil how pencil is bended from one material that is air and inside the water this is not the process the next process is reflection of light so when a light passes on the mirror or when the light passes on the mirror it just reflected backwards it is not absorbing inside that was the refraction process dispersion 
Oh, dispersion is actually the rainbow process where a simple white light is dispersed into seven components. Diffusion particles in a liquid or gas will spread out. Particles move from areas of high concentration to the area of low concentration. Particles move until they are evenly spread out. So lump of sugar is inside the water. Sugar molecules now then dissolve and then highly concentrated particles move to the less low concentration diffusion. And the last process is convection where the warm molecules revolve to the cold molecules, cool molecules and this is how our tea kettle works. But according to these phenomena, only diffusion is the process where two liquids are uh, one, one uh, container has the high concentration liquid and the other is the lower concentration of liquid. You can actually check the purple or red and the yellowish one. And there is a paper where molecules of one beaker uh, liquid diffuses into the other one. So this process is called diffusion and the answer to this question is option number D. That's all from my side and if you find any uh, ambiguity in these slides or anything you want to discuss about IKSC papers kindly do comments. Thanks. Bye-bye.